And don't forget to glove up. Always practice safe numismatics. Hello everybody, Silver Picker here and welcome to the Silver Picker Squad. Now in last week's video I told you all about a lot of the different coin albums that you should absolutely avoid that are low quality and will damage your coins. Don't even look at them. But I also touched on some of the albums that are really good quality that you should consider buying. One of which was my Dansko United States typeset album. Now I also asked you guys if you wanted me to show you an update of my actual US typeset collection and you overwhelmingly said yes. And for those of you who don't know, a typeset is a a type of collection in which you go for one of every single type of design of a given series, in this case, American coins. Now, truth be told, I haven't made all that many changes to my typeset since the last video. However, I'm going to painstakingly remove every single coin from the album and show it off in all of its glory under the best lighting and the best filming that I can possibly do. So if you enjoy the video and you appreciate the work I put into it, please consider smashing that like button and take a moment to hit subscribe. Enough with with the jibber jabber. Let's take a look at those coins. All right, so this is my United States typeset album by Dansko. Unfortunately, these albums are now out of print and they are by far the best United States typeset albums, but there is a close second and I've put the links in the description below if, in case you're interested in starting your own typeset collection. So for those of you who are new collectors, you may not have even realized that there was a denomination lower than one cent produced by the United States. And that is of course the half cent. They did three different designs over the course of time. As you can see, I'm missing these two, but we're going to take a look at my draped bust first. And don't forget to glove up. Always practice safe numismatics. And take a look. What a way to start. An 1807 half cent. Isn't she beautiful? Well, at least they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and since she's mine, I find her beautiful. But of course you can see that it is very, very slick, and you can hardly see any of the details. The reverse is a little bit better, but of course you can really only see the words scent, and that's about it. You can sort of see a little bit worn away where it says half scent, and you can see the wreath a little bit, but it is pretty worn. But you know what? I'm happy that I have at least one example of a half cent, even if she ain't the best. After our half cents are large cents. And as you can see, compared to small cents, which are the coins that we're familiar with today, we have coins that are significantly bigger and are kind of surprising that they're only one cent in value. Now, we have over here my draped bust from 1800. That is crazy. I mean, 1800, that is my oldest US coin. And it's only a few years after US independence. So, I mean, it's 220 years old. You can only imagine the stories that this coin could tell if it could talk. You can take a look at the reverse as well. And what's really cool, by the way, about these is you see that it says one over a hundred. And I love seeing that fraction on coins because it's just so different than what modern coins look like. Then we have my classic head from 1809. The reverse even still has some of its beautiful original luster underneath all that grime over the past couple hundred years. Then we have my 1822 coronet. This I believe has been cleaned, but in any case, it's still really nice because it has a lot of detail, the color is still nice, and it just looks beautiful. And then we've got my 1850, which is the one that's of course in the best shape, which makes sense given that it is the youngest one and you've got a really, really clear view of the reverse, and this is certainly my best example. These ones will most likely get replaced before this one. All right, here we are with the small scents. So let's get started with my Flying Eagle scent from 1858. I absolutely love this coin. I think it is gorgeous. The reverse is very similar to what we'll see in a second is the Indian head scent, but this one is really fantastic. And here are my three different types of Indian head scent. These two, this one from 1859, which was only produced for one year, and this one from 1860 to 1864, this one being 1864, are made of the same type of metal. These are both cupro nickel, but this one is made out of bronze. These two, you can actually see the difference in color. So if these are the same metal and this one's different, I get that, but what about these two? Well, the difference here is subtle and it's on the reverse. The reverse of these two is the same, but the reverse of this one and this one are completely different. This one is a laurel wreath and this one is an oak wreath. Now, I actually don't know the reason why they made that change. I'm sure there's some symbolism there, and if you know, please put it down in the comments below. We would all love to learn. 
These are what are known as Lincoln cents, and it's for the obvious reason that it shows the bust of Abraham Lincoln on the obverse. Now, we have four different types here, and they are all different, even though they may look the same at first glance. Now, the first three are the same in that they are all wheat cents. All three of these have the same reverse. Now, this one is different because it has the more modern Lincoln Memorial scent on the reverse. So this has the Lincoln Memorial on the reverse while these have the wheat stalks. This is from 1943, so during World War II, the United States needed all the copper it could get for the war effort, so it switched it out with steel. Now what about the difference between this and this? The difference is here at the very bottom of the wreath you will see the initials VDB. It's the initials of the engraver, Victor David Brenner. They immediately removed that from the coin in the middle of its first year of production, so only some of the Lincoln wheat scents from 1909 actually have the VDB, and that's what makes them rare. And last but not least, we have the Lincoln Memorial scent, and this one is one that is very common. We're all familiar with this one, and if you are a new collector, you can get one of these for one penny, that's right. You can start your typeset off for just one cent. Next up, we have probably my favorite type of US coinage, and that is obsolete coinage. And that means they are in denominations that are no longer used. And here we have the two cent piece, pretty self-explanatory. This one's from 1864. Let's see on the other side, we have United States of America. Again, another wreath with a giant two cents. And here are my two three cent coins. And these ones are in excellent shape. Again, I'm not looking for a mint state collection, right? I'm trying to get coins that were circulated, that have some history to them, but also show all the details. And I think that these two coins do those wonderfully. Now, what's interesting here is that this is a three cent silver and this is a three cent nickel. But what's really strange about this is that these production runs overlap. The silver was produced from 1851 to 1873, and the nickel was produced from 1865 to 1889. Now, the reason for that is because the public was actually hoarding these silver coins and not putting them out into circulation, which was hurting commerce and making it difficult for businesses to operate. So the United States government started producing them out of nickel as well. Now, the thing that I don't understand is why they didn't just discontinue these and start producing these. Again, if somebody has the answer to that, I would love to know in the comments below. I love the reverse with the strong looking Roman numerals. This one is really unusual looking. It has a very different look than pretty much any other US coin from this time or any other time. And this one is just so simple and I love that design. All right, and here we are up to half dimes. And I have three of them out of the four sitting right here in my collection. The difference here is that next to the date, there were actually two different versions. There's one here where you see nothing next to the date and here where you can actually see little arrows. We'll take a little closer look here and as you can see right over there, there is a little arrow pointing right and harder to see is a little arrow pointing left. And that is actually the only difference between this one and this one. We'll take a look at the reverse. You can see it much better on this example. Of course, my examples are all of varying quality. This one was actually the first example of a half dime I got, and it is actually like bent and crushed up, but I still really like it because it actually has a nice little bit of toning. And the difference with this is that it actually has United States of America over here surrounding Liberty instead of the star pattern. And that's the only difference. So really very similar coins, extremely small and extremely light. You can take a look and compare it to, say, a penny. Nickels here, get your nickels. Nickels, five cents a piece. We've got a bunch of different types of nickels, and yes, I am missing two of them, but they're not two of the most important ones because I still have the general varieties. We've got the shield nickel, we've got the two Liberty nickels, we've got the Buffalo nickel, and we have the two Jefferson nickels. So let's start right over here. This is what's called the shield nickel. My example is from 1868, and mine's a little bit beat up, but I still really, really like it. You can obviously see why it's called the shield nickel because it has a shield, and the difference between this one is that it has stars as you can see and the other one which you can see right over here has rays here we have two examples of the Liberty V nickel this one's from 1883 the first year of issue and this one's from 1912 and if you take a look at the reverses they look almost the same but there's one little difference this one has the word sense at the bottom and this one doesn't originally they put the Roman numeral V for five 
and thought that was it. They called it a day and said, all right, people will know that this is five cents. But what really happened was some enterprising young criminals decided to go out and gold plate these and pass them off as the new $5 coin instead of the new five cent coin. And a lot of people got swindled. So the United States government reissued the coin the following year with the word cents. So nobody would be fooled even if they were gold plated. Next up is the iconic Buffalo nickel. This one's from 1937 and it is in fantastic shape. It's one of my best conditioned nickels that I have and I absolutely love it. And you probably even have one of these lying around. A lot of people who don't collect coins seem to have picked one of these up somewhere along their, their life journey. And the only difference between this Variety 2 versus the Variety 1, which I don't have, is that the Buffalo is standing on a raised mound instead of on a flat mound. And last but not least for the nickels are the Jefferson nickels. These look identical, but there is one big difference. You can see here there's a little letter over Monticello, where here there is not. And that means that this is a war nickel. Just like the steel cent, the metals had to be changed during the World War II period, and this one is actually composed of 35% silver, while this one is almost entirely nickel. All right, it is prime time for dime time. And guess what? I have every single type of dime produced by the United States. I've got the cap bust from 1833. I've got the Seated Liberty from 1837, the Seated Liberty with arrows. You can see again, we've got the arrows really clear next to the date from 1853. And then we have the 1886 with the legend. You can see the difference is that it says United States of America around Liberty instead of the stars. And on this one, unfortunately, Lady Liberty has been assassinated. Yes, they have put a hole in her head and this was at one time a necklace, but alas, I do not have a better example at this time. Over here, we have the Barber Dime, and this one is from 1898. And we have an exquisite, a truly exquisite 1939 Mercury Dime. This one is definitely in mint state, and it is one of really the nicest coins in this whole collection. And we have a pretty nice 1948 Roosevelt Dime, and it's nice because it has a little bit of rainbow toning. And we have here just a regular old 2011 P clad dime. Nothing special over there. And as you can see, some are in better shape, some are in less good shape. I mean, this one's got a hole in it and this one's in mint state, but that is again the beauty of collecting a typeset. It is a lifelong journey. It is a marathon, not a sprint. Unfortunately, I do not have a 20 cent piece and because I love obsolete coinage so much, it kills me that I don't have an example, even one in bad shape, but hopefully I will get one soon enough and I'll be able to update the album and show you all that when I get it. And with quarters, you can see that they follow the same design patterns as the dimes we saw before all the way up until the end of the Liberty Head. Of course, I don't have a capped bust, unfortunately, and I don't have a Liberty seated with the motto. All right, starting us off with the quarters, we're going to take a look at three designs that we are already familiar with. We have two seated Liberties, one with no motto and no arrows from 1861, and one with arrows from 1854. Now, I actually don't know why they put the arrows in. If somebody does, put it in the comments below and let me know. Uh, and then, of course, we have over here the 1915 Barber Quarter. Now, just for a size comparison, you can see here, this is the 1853 dime, Seated Liberty dime, with arrows, and you can see it's about two and a half times smaller. The difference here is that the reverses are very different. You can see here the dime's reverse looks like that, but the quarter's reverse looks like this. I love how these look. Quarter doll for quarter dollar. I love how that looks. I love that eagle. I love the position. I love how it's grabbing the arrows and the olive branch. It just looks awesome. And then over here, we have the heraldic eagle design with the quarter dollar for the barber design. Also a really, really nice design. So Lady Liberty needed to stretch her legs, so she stood up, and that's how we got the Standing Liberty quarters. And there are two different varieties. This is variety one from 1917, and this is variety number two from 1927. The obverses are identical. You see Lady Liberty standing with the shield, except that the reverses are extremely, extremely different, and you will see how. I mean, it's like night and day. I mean, look how different these are. 
Well, actually the only difference is that on Variety 2, there are three stars underneath the eagle, and that is absolutely it. And last but not least for the quarters, we have two Washington quarters. This one from 1964, and this one from 1968. The only difference in these two coins is that this one is composed of 90% silver, and this one is 1968 and is worth exactly 25 cents. Yes, that's right, these are still worth face value, and you can find these in circulation. So again, if you're just starting out, you can literally pull out your first like five to 10 coins right out of circulation. All right, we're starting to get to the heavy hitters of the bunch. Starting us off with the half dollars is this gorgeous cap bust. And you can see here, it's called the cap bust because, well, she's wearing a cap. Lady Liberty has put on a beautiful little hat. Looks like a nightcap to me, but in any case, we've got this one from 1836. The reverse is absolutely spectacular. This coin is in excellent shape. Does have a little bit of staining there, but that's okay. Now it's a little tough to see, but it does have lettering on the edge that says half dollar and 50 cents. Look at these beauties. Now in any other circumstance, I would look at this coin from 1875 and say, man, this is a great, great coin. It's in excellent shape. But because I have this amazing example from 1855, it really just puts this one to shame. I mean, this one, we see it, can take a look at the reverse, that's that, but let's check this coin out more because it really is the star of the show. It really steals the whole stage from everything else. It is in such good shape. It has such amazing detail. It is really in phenomenal, phenomenal shape. Certainly a minimum of XF condition. And last up, we have the Barber half from 1915. You've seen the design before. It's a beautiful design. This particular piece is nothing special, so we will move on because we are not yet done with the half dollars. I mean, over here we have the Liberty Walking, which everyone else calls Walking Liberty. We have the Benjamin Franklin, and we have two different Kennedy hats. Then we have what's really, really cool about this album is it has four slots for commemorative half dollars. The United States has produced tons and tons and tons of really cool commemorative half dollars, and unlike the rest of the album, Album, which is very, very prescriptive about what goes in each slot. These, you get a choice. You can put any four commemorative half dollars that you want. And so next up is the Walking Liberty Half Dollar, which is widely considered to be one of the most beautiful coins ever minted by the United States, and I couldn't agree more. It was actually later used for the American Silver Eagle design, the U.S. Silver Bullion coin. So a lot of people certainly agree that it is a gorgeous, gorgeous design. And the eagle on the reverse certainly is beautiful as well. There's not enough good things I can say about this coin. Hey, Benji, what's going on? How you doing? Well, this is the Benjamin Franklin half dollar. Mine is from 1954. It's not in the best shape, but it's also not in the worst shape. I happen to really like this design. I think Benjamin Franklin is a real hero that we can all look up to, somebody that really valued values, really valued science, and really valued progress and people. So I really like that. We've got the Liberty Bell on the reverse, and it's just a really, really nice coin, and they're not too expensive, so it's a great place to start if you're getting into your typeset. And for our standard issue half dollars, we've got our last two, which are the two Kennedy halves. We have the one from 1964, which was commemorating uh, John F. Kennedy after he was assassinated, and the 1969. The 1964 was composed of 90% silver and is much, much more sought after than this one, which is from 1969, which contains only 40% silver. They also have ones from 1971 and on, which of course contain no silver, and I decided not to include that one in my collection because why not have silver when you can? After all, I am the silver picker. I'm actually not a huge, huge fan of this design. I think that it's a little bit too busy and I prefer the older designs better, but hey, they didn't ask me. And next up for our half dollars are the commemorative halves. And again, these are not restricted to specific coins. You can choose any half dollars that you want, any commemorative halves. And I happen to really like the older ones. I have two of the older ones and two modern ones. And that's frankly just because I don't have any more varieties of the older ones. Eventually I will replace these two with older ones, but for now I'm pretty happy having these as well. 
So over here we have the 1892 or 1893 Colombian Exposition half, which was actually the first commemorative half dollar ever minted by the United States. This one's the 1893 version and it is in excellent shape. This one is the Booker T. Washington half dollar. I got this in a collection I purchased and decided to keep it because I thought it was really cool. And I really, really love the message on the reverse. It says from slave cabin to hall of fame. How cool is that? And this one will stay in my collection for a long, long time. The next two are the modern ones, and this one is a modern silver George Washington commemorative, and it is from 1982, and it is a very, very well-known half dollar, and they have it in an uncirculated and a proof version. This is the proof version. Then we have the Liberty. The 1991 and 1995, which is the anniversary of the victory of World War II, and it has a really, really cool World War II design on the reverse, and my family's history is very, very closely tied to World War II, so this one is a very special one to me. So yeah, you can personalize this however you want. Time to say hello to the big boys. That's right, we are up to silver dollars, which is basically everybody's favorite denomination. And here is my absolute favorite coin in my collection, hands down, and it's because it is beautiful, it is valuable, it is silver, it is historically significant, and it is super, super unique. And I mean that literally. So this is a trade dollar from 1877. These are slightly larger than normal US silver dollars, and that's because these were used for trade overseas in Asia, and they were intended to compete with the Spanish Real, which was a little bit bigger. So this is a coin that was actually produced in order to be used outside the borders of the United States. And you can see mine here is all beat up, right? It's got all these scratches on it. You see Lady Liberty sitting there, sort of profile view, and you see all the scratches. The reason they're there is super cool. You can see it on the reverse. Over here, you can see lots of little Chinese characters, Chinese chop marks that were pounded in to this coin. And that is why the obverse is all messed up. I would love to be able to identify these someday and figure out which assay or which merchant actually used these coins. But I mean, come on, how historically interesting is that? And next up is the iconic Morgan silver dollar. This one you can see here is in my collection because it's in very good shape and it has some beautiful rainbow toning. Unfortunately, it looks like somebody may have actually cleaned off a lot of the rainbow toning before it was part of my collection, which is definitely a shame, but I love how it looks, I love the color, and I love the detail that it has. This one's from 1897, and it is definitely the most iconic silver dollar we've produced, and I really, really like it for that reason. Next up is my 1922 peace dollar. These were produced right after World War I, and the idea was to promote peace and harmony in the world, in the wake of World War I. And these coins are a beautiful design, but they're frustrating to collectors because the strike is often really, really weak. And in this case, it's actually not so bad, but the only ones with really, really nice strikes are the 1921 high relief coins, and that's the first year of issue. You can take a look at the reverse, which is also a really, really interesting design choice because the eagle looks really docile. It looks like it's not ready to attack, and I think that that was on purpose because it is the peace dollar. You can see it's sitting on a rock that says peace, and I actually really like the concept. Unfortunately, of course, just a few years later, World War II broke out, and that would shatter any illusions that peace had been achieved post-World War I. And here we are with the least favorite coin in my typeset. Yes, I think this is the least favorite coin in my typeset. I think that these are worthwhile for investing, but I don't love the design. This is the Eisenhower dollar. I opted for a proof finish one because I wanted to have a 40% silver one as opposed to clad. Obviously, I'm always going to opt for silver. This is the 1971 version, and you can see the reverse. The reverse I actually quite like. It has a lot of space-related uh, motifs. You can see that the eagle has landed on the moon, and you can see the Earth in the background. I really like that because it was right after we had the moon landing in 1969, and I think it was a huge achievement for the United States and for mankind, for the world. But I don't actually love the design, and this particular specimen, the proof kind of looks a little bit milky and just not very nice. So I'm hoping to get a really, really nice non-proof 40% silver Ike to replace this with. But for now, this is what I've got. 
and we've made it to the home stretch. This is the last page of the Dansko US type set, and it is the last eight coins that we're gonna be looking at today. Unfortunately, this is my least favorite page of the book. It feels like it was sort of just haphazardly thrown together. I mean, I do get that the bicentennial set does go together, but then we've got two dollar coins, we've got then a quarter, then another dollar coin, and then a bullion coin. To me, it just doesn't look great, and I think that the rest of the album looks so amazing that this one just kind of mars it a little bit. I really hope that Dansko does decide to put this back into production and redesign the whole thing so that all of these coins are integrated by denomination like the rest of the album, but enough of my soapbox demands. And here are our bicentennial quarter, half, and dollar coin. These were minted to commemorate the 200th anniversary of the United States of America from 1776 to 1976. And these were coins that I actually loved collecting out of circulation when I was a kid. I used to go for these drummer boy quarters all the time whenever I would find them. My dad would save them for me, and I absolutely love the design to this day. On the Kennedy half, the reverse is basically, I think, pretty boring. And then on the Ike dollar, we have the Liberty Bell in front of the moon. Again, the moon motif is really nice. I do actually like that reverse, but the drummer boy is the one that really, really outshines the rest in my opinion. And next up, we've got these three coins, the Susan B. Anthony dollar, the Sacagawea dollar, and the state quarter. Again, no clue why these are arranged like that, but that's how they have them in the album. I have the 1999 silver proof of the, of the Susan B. Anthony dollar, which is actually a really sharp coin. And you can see here we have the same design as the Eisenhower dollar on the reverse, which I quite like. I think it, like I said, it looks really nice. Then we have the Sacagawea dollar, which commemorates Sacagawea, a Native American woman. And we have a really nice reverse, in my opinion. I really, really love that eagle flying out design. It's a very, very cool design. And then I have a silver proof of the Delaware State Quarter. I decided to go with Delaware, even though I'm not from Delaware, but it was the first year of issue. It's the most iconic one, in my opinion. So I went with that, and this is the silver proof. And here we are, the last two coins in my United States typeset. Of course, it's not the last coins I need because there are quite a few holes that I'm hoping to fill, but right here we have a commemorative US silver dollar. This is the one commemorating D-Day, June 6, 1944, and this one is actually the sister coin of the World War II half dollar that I had, and these came in a set, and I decided to use a matching one. What's interesting about this coin is it actually has quite a bit of text on the reverse. You can pause the video if you want to read it. It's a really sharp coin. I actually quite like it, and I think that I probably won't uh, be switching this one out anytime soon. Then, of course, we have the super iconic American Silver Eagle. I have the one from 1988. Anybody who wants to guess why I chose that year can put it in the comments below. And it has, again, the Walking Liberty design on the, on the obverse. And the reverse has a heraldic eagle with stars, and it says one ounce, fine silver, one dollar. The only criticism I have about this coin is, well, it says one dollar. And I think it's high time that we get rid of these ridiculous face values for coins that have never and will likely never be worth just one dollar. So, what'd you think? I had such a blast sharing my US typeset with you guys, and this is the first time that I really showed it in depth, and I had a blast making the video because it really made me appreciate the coins in a different light and made me really, really see how far I've come on this journey and how far I still have to go. I also hope that it inspired you to start your own collecting journey if you haven't started yet. And it doesn't just have to be a US typeset, it could be a different country or it could be any type of typeset. Typesets don't just have to be about countries. You could try and get one of every single type of animal coin from all different countries. Or if you want to get really funky, you could try collecting one of every type of coin from countries that no longer exist. That's the great thing about typesets. You can define the type however you want and get as creative as you want. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that it inspires you and I hope that you come back for more. So if you enjoyed the video, give it a like, share it with your friends, hit the subscribe button, do all the YouTube stuff because I got a lot more great stuff coming down the pike. So stay tuned and until then, Silver Picker out. A huge, huge thank you to all of my wonderful patrons. You guys are amazing. Thank you so, so much for your support. I have been absolutely loving talking to you guys in the Discord. Things have been so interesting these past couple weeks. If you're interested in becoming a patron, now's the time.